They're the drugs from the small screen that we either wish were real or are really glad don't exist. Are you tired, run down, listless? Do you poop out at parties? Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fictional drugs from TV. My drug is still alive in the systems of the now sober members of Snakes and Battles. For this list, we'll be taking into account the medicines, narcotics, and other compounds that are the most inventive, interesting, iconic, or important to the shows in question. Let's begin. He's coding. Get me a box of kittens, stack! Number 10, Ritterall. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. I can't stop grinding my teeth. I don't know how these kids study on this goddamn Ritterall. Yeah, I don't know either, and I don't give a shit. Let's start with a substance a little close to reality, Ritterall. You got any lewds? <laughs> lewds? I don't think they make those anymore, man. No? We got Ritterall. Ritterall? Yeah. An apparent combination of Ritalin and Adderall, it's the go-to upper for the frat members of Dennis's old fraternity, as the gang at Patty's Pub discovers. Ooh! <laughs> Oh, that's tasty stuff. Although the whole group is no stranger to many forms of substance abuse, it's Dennis and Frank who partake in the snorting of Ritterall while they attempt to recruit some help for the Flipadelphia competition at the frat. Take a look at how loose his jeans okay, are. Okay. <laughs> After being tased, the pair then takes Ritterall-fueled revenge on the frat boys, culminating with a message left in flaming letters on the lawn. I've created a masterpiece. Wow. Number nine, no molest all. The Venture Brothers. Hey boys, I'm uh, all out of merch, and <laughs> and the OSI folks they, they they don't seem to be answering my calls, so I <laughs> get a little antsy. When the only man willing to be a bodyguard to you and your two sons is your former arch enemy and a pedophile who has allegedly molested said boys, by the way, then the answer to your problems is no molest all. <laughs> no. No. Ah. Sergeant Hatred's drug of choice was developed by his former employers at the Office of Secret Intelligence to allow the profoundly disturbed man to perform his job, protecting the Venture family by keeping his urges in check. You're not allowed to arch just without it. Who's arching? I'm trying to watch a movie. The withdrawal symptoms can be pretty severe, though, including sweats, dark thoughts, growing large breasts, and the desire to drink men's fragrance products. I'm drinking... Uh... I don't know, it's awful. I think it's Axe Cologne, or maybe the CVS equivalent, I don't know. Number eight, Hydromel, Doctor Who. The only power he has is in the control of the Hydromel. Without that, we're all dead. Be careful. Although Hydromel is the French name for mead, the one featured in the Hooniverse is far from honey water. This phosphorescent compound staves off the effects of Lazarus disease, which is similar to leprosy. He's delirious. He needs mm. hydromel. There isn't any to spare. But he's dying. So why detain him? The sufferers are transported to the Terminus space station, where hydromel is supplied to the enslaved workforce that runs it. Even if we were, it's not possible without hydromel. It's the company who control that. But if you had an endless supply of it, you'd be free of their control, wouldn't you? These guards are called the Vanir, and the hydromel they're given helps them to stay healthy. If they stop taking it, however, they risk becoming Lazars themselves, and that is obviously not the most ideal situation. Short-term memory is always the first to go. Look, I'll get some hydromel. There's a case of it through there. Mm, the Iraq won't release any. Who said I was going to ask him? Number seven, the luck virus, Red Dwarf. Luck virus, sexual magnetism. You'd think with all the viruses out there, there'd be a couple that could affect people positively, right? And as Dr. Hildegard Landstrom and the boys from Red Dwarf discover, there are. And they can be packaged in liquid form. Look, is a virus. A positive virus which most humans contract at some point in their lives for very short periods. And here it is. Lady Luck in liquid form. Want to try some? One among them is the Luck virus, which people apparently contract for small periods throughout their lives. In concentrated form, luck can make the implausible and unlikely come true, like picking cards out of a deck or typing out the right combination on a keypad at random. Even so, this is a minute dose and will only last for about three minutes. Now, I want you to pick out all the aces from this pack of cards. Luck also acts as a counter agent to another positive virus, sexual magnetism. A tiny swig at to see if it works. 
well, bottoms up, then bottoms down, and hopefully bottoms up again. Number six, NZT48, Limitless. A jump start. Okay, what did I have to lose? Here we go. Sometimes you need a double dosage of a drug. NZT48 made our top fictional movie drugs list as well. But since it's so integral to the show, which is based on the movie that was based on a book anyway, we're going to expound the merits and the costs of the brain power boosting pill once more. All you need to remember is that every so often, you take one of these shots, and you can have as much NZT as you want with no side effects. The show centers on Brian Finch, whose introduction to the smart drug leads him into a job with the FBI and a connection to Bradley Cooper's character from the film, Eddie Mora, who's now a shady senator. The body craves it faster and faster, yeah. You think it's bad now, it's only gonna get worse. You actually might remember this moment as the last time you felt vaguely human. Although Mora supplies Brian with a drug that counters NZT's harmful side effects, Brian's work and his acquaintance with the senator bring their own risks. But I know the research is in there. I just gotta get back inside and find the records. Are you sure? You sound strange. I'm fine. Number five, Bloody Eye, also known as Red Eye, Cowboy Bebop. Premium Red Eye, you're a buyer, you know the score. Check it out. Is that real Bloody Eye? A designer steroid-like drug created by the interplanetary crime network simply called the Syndicate. Bloody Eye is appropriately administered through eye spray, tinting the user's eyes red and giving a crimson tinge to their vision. Yeah, keep those eyes open. Like most steroids, it enhances physical strength. In addition, Red Eye heightens awareness to the point where everything seems to move slower than it really does, allowing for quicker reactions. It doesn't help if the user can't see their opponent's blows coming, however. Red Eye's side effects may also include increased aggression and difficulty breathing, likely because of the demand it puts on the body. Looking for this? Do you know how much you're worth? What? Number four, focus in, The Simpsons. I'm afraid I'll have to expel your son. <gasps> unless you're willing to try a radical, untested, potentially dangerous... Candy bar? No. It's a new drug called Focusin. A series as satiric as The Simpsons is bound to invent a few drugs for its purposes, both legal and otherwise. Whether it's the fictitious Flintstones chewable morphine or the memory-altering Repressitol. Remember your first day at school? Not as long as I keep taking these. Our pick, Focusin, is recommended by Principal Skinner to treat ADD. When Bart's antics go too far, Marge guilt trips her son into trying it. A drug? I know Bart can be rambunctious, but he's not some hyperactive monster. Give me an F! <gasps> Give me an Good art! Lord. While it seems to work fine initially, Bart soon becomes paranoid, believing that satellites owned by Major League Baseball are spying on him. They have it now. And who are they, exactly? Who else? Major League Baseball. March. I think Bart's gone crazy. However, since MLB satellites really are monitoring everyone, the drug's actual merits are debatable. It's clearly not for everyone, though, as evidenced by Homer's extremely twitchy reaction. <laughs> Number three, Chemical X, the Powerpuff Girls. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction, Chemical X. Besides sugar, spice, and everything nice, Chemical X is what makes the Powerpuff Girls so, well, powerful. Hi! Ah! What's your name? A sort of catch-all mutagen. The black opaque liquid is a recurring plot device, often giving rise to villains of the week, as well as some of the trio's most ardent foes, such as Mojo Jojo. Do you really think I would harm my own father? Who received his increased intellect and green skin in the same accident that created the adorable titular superheroes. I wasn't born a supervillain chimp with an oversized brain, you know. Evil geniuses are made, not born. And it was Professor Utonium who made me what I am today. You'd think that with all the mayhem it's caused, Professor Utonium would keep it under better guard. Girls! Girls, where are you? You are right. We should try and stop Mojo and I know how. I whipped up an antidote to Chemical X. It'll do away with his powers. Girls, girls, girls! <laughs> Number two, Vitamita Vegemin. I love Lucy. It's so tasty, too. 
In what may be one of the most well-known episodes of I Love Lucy, Lucy manages to finagle her way into appearing as a spokeswoman for a TV commercial. He said to tell you that he's very sorry, but they've already hired another girl to do the commercial, and they won't be needing you after all. <laughs> Say goodbye. The ad is for Vitamita Vegemin, a health tonic containing vitamins, minerals, meat, and vegetables. Everything a body needs. The answer to all your problems is in this little bottle. As Lucy and the director soon discover, however, it also contains 23% alcohol. Vitamin and vitamin contains vitamins, meat, vegetables, and minerals. After sampling it several times for numerous takes, Lucy becomes progressively sloshed and slurs her way through the sales pitch, memorably mispronouncing the many-syllabled product's name. So why don't you join the thousands of happy, happy people and get a great big bottle of Maya Mita Amigement? <laughs> Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Who supplies you with vertigo? Tell me now and you live. Please! He'll kill me! Sadly, Timosil has been discontinued. Mm. The sense of wellness it created in relationships was merely the first sign of complete pituitary shutdown. <laughs> My drug, totally awesome sweet Alabama liquid snake, worked on the rest of snakes and barrels and left them blank slates, ready to be reprogrammed. Number one, Blue Sky, Breaking Bad. Maybe blue, but it's a bomb. You said it, Jesse. After having to alter their cooking process, everyone's favorite meth-making duo ends up with what becomes their signature product, Blue Sky. Tight, 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 yeah! Oh, blue, yellow, pink! Whatever, man, just keep bringing me that. Behind the scenes, the blue coloring was designed by the writers to make sure Walt and Jesse's meth was distinctive. But in reality, blue meth, while possible, is unlikely to be as chemically pure as theirs is purported to be. Yeah, exactly, the blue stuff. You had it too? Yeah, bro. I wish I never even heard of it. It's like lighting my whole head on fire. Yeah, the stuff will burn you down. Then again, the Big Blue, Blue Magic, and Fring's Blue, as it's also known, may just be further testament to the great Heisenberg's chemistry skills. You'll feel hot at every mountain. Do you agree with our list? Felicitas Populi, commonly known as Luck. What's your favorite fictional TV pharmaceutical? Sugar. Spice. And everything nice. For more body chemistry altering top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. <laughs>